Welcome to the Startup Grind. Good afternoon. Thank you for staying with us here over lunchtime, which is uh, uh, a special time. And I'm uh, especially happy to welcome here today somebody I consider, and I've been now in this industry for quite a long time, as truly exceptional. She, in my views, is exceptional at three levels. First of all, some of you attended the previous session here, Space Mining, so that's very, very uh, out there, let's say. We are very active and everybody talks about FinTech. And Paulina and Eugene Mizan, the co-founder, they had the courage to start a very special startup in, on the job market. She's exceptional at another level. She is one of the very few women which we were given to welcome at Lux Future Lab. We only have two or three out of 30 companies, so that is in itself already also exceptional. And finally, uh, she is on her own, a spin-off, so to say, of our um, university system because she graduated from uh, the um, uh, Uni.lu Master of Entrepreneurship and Innovation and uh, it's interesting for us to see how people come to Luxembourg and how they remain here and so that would be my first question Paulina what did you get here and what's the, how do you feel it here? Um, first of all Karin thank you for a very kind introduction um, no pressure, Polina. Now I just have to live up to all of it. <laughs> but let, let, let me try. Um, yeah, maybe just to jump straight away to answer your first question. Um, yes, I did graduate from um, Inno Innovation and Entrepreneurship Master here mm -hmm. in Luxembourg. I do have to say I absolutely love the program. It was intense. It's a master program which is, combines two years of master in one which I did in parallel with running my business here in Lux. And uh, I have to say it was very much an eye-opening um, study for me. Uh, my background lies in traditional business, in hospitality and retail, and I was very much a um, traditional tra entrepreneur dealing with a sort of old-fashioned <coughs> business of retail. So going to the Master of Entrepreneurship and Innovation really opened my eye on exciting world of technology and uh, this light bulb went on thinking okay how we can apply all these beautiful learnings from technology in the very traditional sector of hospitality and retail and that's how the whole journey started. Well maybe you give us a short summary of what job today is today. Well job today it's very easy to, to make a short summary of what we do. We help people find jobs and that is a very gratifying task. We are focusing on industries such as hospitality and retail. We are focusing on blue collar jobs and we just strive to remove all the friction out of hiring process and make hiring easy, simple and immediate. Once again, in other view, um, job is not something which is uh, nice to have. It's a vital necessity for millions of people out there. And what we are building a job today is a social hiring platform where people come to find some of them a gig for, for, for a weekend and some of them to find a, a life calling. Job today is meant to be the place where lives of first people, life of life of first job seekers are getting better. Mm -hmm. So we are there to help employers find great workers and to find workers Find help, help workers find great jobs. Yes, but you say uh, blue collar. I see on your internet side it's also getting into beauty. I see applications for tech jobs and so on. So is it evolving? You, um, I believe you have over one million applications to your site per week. Where do you see it going? Is it moving out of that initial area? Um, yeah, I think I uh, maybe misphrased it. It's more about casual jobs. But casual jobs is something we are really focused on. So I don't see us immediately today to move into white color job space. Um, we don't, we believe it's good to be focused and this is one of the key lessons I, I would say I learned in the last two years is going to the essence and really sticking with what is really important. And our focus today, it's really help 
huge industry of blue collar jobs or casual jobs to help those people to connect those employers and those job seekers. This is where the focus mm -hmm. is. And once again, when I'm talking about casual, casual by itself can be a very broad um, meaning. It can be anything from waitress to, as you mentioned, the beautician or logistic job or administrative tasks at the office, but it's still casual and blue color in our, in our, in our view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think you're in a highly competitive market. You have uh, some heavy competitors like uh, Job and Talent, Hire, Jobio, Vettery. They are operating actually like Job and Talent in the market where you started. Because the interesting thing with Job Today is that though they are based in Luxembourg, they started <laughs> their business in uh, Barcelona. Now you're in the UK, uh, so how are you handling the competition? What do you make differently? And how you handle this distance to your markets and probably investors? Um, thank you, Karen. That's an excellent question. Well, in my view, um, I would say we have no competition. Uh, I think we're in an absolutely unique position uh, based on what we do and the sector after which we are going. We are going after this immense uh, sector of blue collar jobs, which today absolutely no other player on the market is serving it well. So we are just, we have this absolutely unique opportunity to go and literally change the way how those businesses are hiring, uh, those jo job seekers are looking for a job. Uh, just a few stats to share with you. Uh, today, in this world where we use technology to, to order food online, to find ourselves a date or to book a, a trip, to a, a vacation trip someplace, 70% um, of businesses, 70% of businesses in hospitality and retail are still hiring offline. So how crazy is that? Mm -hmm. Why does this happen? Clearly it happens because industry is broken. It is broken because when you go downtown Luxembourg, go down downtown Paris, London, New York, you still see signs we are hiring in uh, shops and windows of, mm. of shops and restaurants. That's crazy. And we are doing that because there is not a solution out there who can help them solve that need. Uh, coming back to competition and other players in the market, I don't think they have the same focus as we do. I don't think they are fighting the same battle as we do. Um, and basically, I don't see anybody, not only in Europe, but worldwide, who could show today the same traction as Job Today can show after only two years on the market. Mm -hmm. um, we have been around for two years. We recently celebrated our birthday in April. Uh, in two years, we brought on the platform of close to three million applicants. Uh, we are processing close to one million applications per week. Uh, 260,000 businesses join us and using us practically every day to fill the vacancies for their businesses, for their for business needs. Um, nobody can show numbers which are anywhere close to that. Mm -hmm. So that's my view on competition. Mm -hmm. And the way you approach the market, I think you once mentioned to me, you started from Luxembourg to deal with Barcelona. You started, you launched up today in Barcelona because of the high in unemployment rates, is that what you look at when you launch in a market or you simply look at market size? Well, the honest answer would be when we finished uh, developing our um, prototype of a product, we were in Luxembourg and it was cold and we were miserable and we felt the only way we can do right by ourselves is actually go and launch Spain as a market. <laughs> but uh, no, the real reasons for us to go to Spain was first, we were looking for a sizable European market with a vibrant um, economy mm -hmm. when it comes to our industries, the hospitality and retail, which is difficult to beat. I mean, Spain, 50% of PIB of Spain actually comes from hospitality and retail. Um, so we were looking for a sizable European market. Luxembourg, with all due respect, is a great place to live, but it's quite small. Uh, we were looking for great economy and hospitality and retail. And yes, back then we were also thinking um, that unemployment could be a factor which could allow us to grow. Um, today they are very active in two markets and they couldn't be more different as they are. 
they are very active in UK and they are active in Spain. And the truth is, um, just by the nature of the sectors which we serve, which are constantly faced with a very high churn of staff, which is as high as up to 80% in hospitality and retail, we are not convinced at all today that unemployment is a big contributor to our success. Hmm. Because unemployment and non-employment, just this hiring need is so universal and it's just so strong in our industries that both job seekers in the industry and employers desperately need a solution who can connect them as fast as possible and with as less friction as possible. Mm. After Spain and uh, the UK, uh, there was mention you going to <coughs> Germany, maybe the US, what are the next markets you want to approach? Well, this company was born in Luxembourg. It launched the first market in Spain as a test market. It followed it by one of the most expensive and competitive markets in the world, which is UK. And all of it happened clearly because we have a mission and we have an ambition. And the mission is to be a universal and useful social platform for employers and job seekers where they go to the platform and their lives get better from that very moment. And when I say universal, I clearly mean global. I believe we are tackling an immense and essential need which exists in every market from Tokyo to Brazil. And uh, job today is there to become number one globally. Now, which market we are going to do next? Um, once again, if there is anything I learned in the last two years, is to focus and to, to do things right. So yes, we have our eyes on one main market in Europe, and we will be developing it soon enough. And after that, clearly, United States is a very interesting market as well. <laughs> then, um Funding, uh, we were very proud because Job Today, I think, in a very short period, as uh, Paulina mentioned, they were only <coughs> created in December 2014, so literally, you say 2015, and there were immediately two rounds 10 and 20 million uh, by really uh, excellent, I must say, uh, names of the industry. Uh, now, beginning of this year, you announced a 35 million media package deal. So maybe a question on these uh, VCs, these investors, what they did they bring to you and uh, where will you take it from there? Any new round up? Uh, I couldn't be more proud and fortunate of investors and our investor board, which uh, we have a job today. I believe it's definitely the best in Europe. Um, we have great names uh, such as Mangrove, Axel Partners, uh, Felix uh, Capital, Flint. Uh, Flint Capital, who joined us. We also have a number of um, very well-known media players who uh, joined Job Today through Media for Equity Investment. Um, among those investors, I can speak of Atris Media in Spain, uh, Channel 4 in UK, and as you RTL. mentioned, RTL in Germany. So all of those names are big and why is it important? Um, what we are building here in Job Today, we are building a universal platform. We are building a brand. When you are building a brand, you have to become top of mind for your users. And we wouldn't be able to do so without having right partners, and I'm not afraid of using this word, right partners on the media side. Because we believe consumers are not only on internet. We are a technology company, but our consumers are everywhere. Our consumers are working in this building, serving us, co serving us coffees and, and, and refreshments. Uh, our consumers are down the street in, in any business you walk into. And to get to those people, they need to use a broad uh, variety of, uh, of marketing channels. Com bringing it back to our financial investors, they brought much more than money. They brought um, the knowledge about the industry, they brought the insights, they brought the experience, they spared us absolutely countless number of mistakes. And in many cases, they just function as uh, supporters, as the first person to be there and to say, hey, you're going to get through it, we're going to help you. And it's, 
it's just amazing to have them with us. Mm -hmm. Without mentioning all the doors which we can open just by giving the guidance and by, by introducing us to their networks. Mm -hmm. And where did it help you being a Luxembourg-based startup, considering that RTL Group is also based in Luxembourg? Um, well, in all honesty, we are really happy to work with RTL Group. We actually, it was an interesting fact to mention in conversations mm -hmm. with them. I don't think it was the deal breaker, the mm -hmm. fact that both mm -hmm. of us were in Luxembourg. Mm. But um, it was great for us being in Luxembourg and actually meeting our very first investor who today I would say is much more of an investor. We really see uh, Mark Toulouse and mm. Mangrove uh, partners. We really see it much more as a part of a team and uh, somebody who is, whose contribution to the company goes way beyond financial mm -hmm. investment. Yes. But maybe it also helped that Eugene had been working for Mangrove, so understood very well as a startup what really venture capitalists are looking for, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And I think it's, it's very right for us today to, to mention Eugene and I wouldn't be here. I think I have the best mm -hmm. co-founder in the world mm -hmm. and I think it's important to be in a team where, mm -hmm. where you are complementary and uh, I just couldn't be happier with both my investors and my co-founder and the talented team of people we have a job today. You, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Uh, I, have, I, I have one more question, which was a little bit on the business model. Maybe you would like to say one word on that, because when you go on your site, you see it's free for job seekers and it's free for employers. <coughs> So, on what is based your job, your business model? Um, well, once again, we are a very young company, and for the first two years of our existence, uh, the focus, the famous focus, which is driving us driving the day and night, was really, really, we were really, really focused on one thing only, which was building liquidity and grow. Uh, why the growth and building liquidity is so important for us? Well, they're a marketplace, essentially. Mm -hmm. And as a marketplace, what you do is you connect supply and you connect demand. Mm -hmm. And the main reason of your existence and the main reason a contributor to your success is how you good you are in actually building that liquidity. Mm -hmm. Because if I run a restaurant and I'm looking for a waitress and I'm based in Madrid, even if I have 3,000 waiters for you but they're all in Barcelona, chances are it's not gonna make a difference to that employee in particular. So we were really, really, really focusing on creating that magic. Like today, if you use us in UK, which is a relatively young market for us, um, if you use us in London and if you post a job with Job Today, a platform there in hospitality and retail, you will get people applying in minutes and chances are you will get over 50 resumes just in the hours which follow. And that's where you create that wow effect. You know, when it happens, starts happening and employer goes, wow, it works. It's really working. I have all those people looking for my job. Uh, the same for job seekers. When you open the app and you think, wow, I have all those jobs. I haven't seen them anywhere, but I find them here in job today. So that was our initial focus. And that's what, what really believe makes us very different is like really creating that magic on the platform. Now, how do you monetize that? Um, in other view, Possibilities to monetize are just endless. There are many different things you can monetize with amazing liquidity you build. Uh, the first steps and we started monetizing were very early in this process. We started monetizing about two months ago. Uh, the first results we are seeing are very more than encouraging. So what we are charging money for today is we are charging money to employers, to employers meaning on the business side of things, for connecting with candidates of their interest. So let's say you posted a job on Job Today and you got over 150 applications. Uh, we will only charge you for getting in touch and getting, in, getting access to those candidates which you find of interest for that position. And um, that's one model that which we are pursuing today. So basically it's pay per candidate, ac candidate access. Success fee. Sort of success fee. 
Um, we see really great conversion. Uh, the first results of conversion are over 40% to, to paid customer. And we have only mm. been there doing that for the last two months. Um, once again, it really comes back to how easy and efficient your product is. And we are really, we are once again, even there, I believe we, are, we have a room to improve and we are very critical. Whatever you see today of job today as a product, it's, it's just, we are just beginning to scratch the surface. There is just so much more to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have <laughs> questions in the room? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do the same thing. That's good. <laughs> uh, my name is Annika. I'm super excited to hear you share the story, Polina. Uh, I have two questions. <coughs> One is, um, so we're talking about to be successful, you need to combine passion and purpose and to fulfill a need. The need being the papers in the door is obvious. Uh, but how did you end up doing job today was it were you thinking of it was it suggested to you how did it happen sort of uh, I feel it <laughs> it's a really good question one of my favorite ones uh, well let me just maybe bring it back to um, what was I doing back then when idea was born and um, prior to to, to, to launch Job Today, which is a technology company essentially, together with my brilliant co-founder Eugene, which today is not with me. Um, I was actually working in retail and I was running a chain of petrol stations here in Luxembourg, working with a company called Shell. And running that business, which is very much a traditional business, right? running with business, but it's a very, which is a great example of what retail business is all about, meaning um, large opening hours, uh, very high turnover of staff, uh, very intense um, working days. Um, I was actually the one faced with all those challenging, challenges of hiring people on short notice. And on short notice or in general, just finding people uh, in a way which would be easy and efficient to fill positions in businesses in retail and hospitality. So I was doing it for a number of years and trust me, I tried every solution out there on the market. Job boards, stamp agencies, that famous paper in the window, you just name it. And there came one moment which was actually a real life situation when Eugene came over for dinner at my place. And imagine yourself having a Friday dinner with friends and you're just about to sit on the table and enjoy the, the, your, your time when your telephone rings and one of my hiring managers is calling me telling me, Polina, another emergency, three people sick, what are we going to do? And you are like, Friday evening, where do I call? Where do I go? And then I remember just looking up to Eugene across the table, saying to him, you know what? We're going to fix it. It just <laughs> has to be fixed. It just cannot be this way. And that's how the conversation started, really inspired by this everyday issue and a very real problem. And since we started talking about it with Eugene, it literally became an obsession to, to, to both of us. So nothing but, I think, three to four months later, both of us just probably out of exhaustion because it's really difficult to work on a, pro on a project while you are running your full-time job. We just resigned from p very cushy and comfortable positions, which we both had back when, and just committed full time to this crazy venture, which is Job Today. Hope that answers the question. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I get super excited. I almost cried. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it even more now, knowing the the background story that you have. Yeah. Um, so thank you. My other question is, from that moment, you know, Friday night dinner was disturbed until now, was there a moment of challenge where you felt like this is too hard or I can't do it or this challenge was not expected and if so, how did you proceed or overcome it? When you run a startup, um, there are so many challenges. To, to I don't believe it's, it's possible to be prepared for all of them. 
But I guess what really matters is if you truly believe in what you do and you are truly committed and you are thinking, hey, it just has to be better. It just has to happen. <laughs> it, it, I really want to get it done. It really, I just want to show the world of that we can change some things and we can make the lives better. Um, when you have this conviction and when you see people who are using you, because when you, I was the one running, meeting the first customers with a prototype and showing it to employers and please use me, tell me what you think, what would you, what would you how do you find it? And when you see, the f they look at the faces and when you see how, say, okay, that's awesome, I love it. How come it took you so long? And I remember in the first, first days you were asking people, hey, that's my prototype, use it, tell me, what can I improve? I'm listening to you, you're my customer, tell me how I can do better. And I remember that scary look in the eyes of some business owners, please don't touch it, it's perfect, it's perfect <laughs> just the way it is, don't make it complicated, you're gonna mess it up. So when you see that feedback, um, I, you know, whatever challenges you might have, it's, you, just, you just have the energy and the strength to, 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 to overcome it. To me personally, maybe one of the best moments of my first year in, in job today was then I was always trying to, to come with my um, team on the first meetings with customers when you actually sort of demo the product. And it's a beautiful feeling then um, you see employer actually using your product for the first time and you are in a country which is not your own in some strange places which sometimes I don't even... Where it rains all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, most, it was already in, in Spain. Uh, it <laughs> doesn't rain that much there. So sometimes you just find yourself in the places where I cannot even speak out the name correctly and I'm there with an employer who is using me for the first time and I see how he posts a job on the platform and I see how people start applying to it. So his telephone literally goes bzz, bzz, bzz. You got another application, somebody <laughs> else applied for your job. And I really cannot describe that feeling when it happens. Because it's like, I imagine an architect who de designed a really beautiful house and that, proper, that the project was built and he's passing by in front of it and he sees lights in the windows and people having dinner and kids playing on a, on a playground. And, and when you see whatever it is you imagined and it all started really with a napkin and a design and it just becomes real and it's out there in the real world and it really changes people's lives because once again it's a huge contribution to help somebody find a job. I think all of us, we do it. It's like sometimes you talk to friends who are telling us, hey, I'm looking for something, can you help me? And then you make an intro, and we all feel excited, right? When the friends call us like two weeks late or three weeks late, say, hey, thanks, I got accepted, it's great, I'm so happy. You get a great feeling about it, right? And just imagine if you can do it in scale. And imagine if you don't help only the person you know, but if you really change the lives of millions of people out there. Today we have, three million users, job seekers on the platform. Three million coming back to Luxembourg, that would be what, six time, yeah. the, the country yeah, where it all started. Um, coming back to how people use In us. Invasion. Invasion of jobs today, yeah. Uh, those job seekers who come to us and register with us, 70% of them come back and use us again. 70%. You would think, okay, if we come back, did we not find a job, did it not well, go well? Just keep in mind that we are in the business and we are serving the industries where the turnover is very high and many of them are working with short contracts. So it's rather logical for them to come back once they found something and they're happy about it, to come back mm -hmm. and use us again. On the business side of things, 65% of businesses who are using us today are repeat customers meaning they posted once, they found somebody, they filled the vacancy and then they, they come back. And uh, the reviews which you, which you see, um, which you read on an app store and which you get in the customer service inbox, people are just amazed. Hey, it really works. I mean, I used you and I found something the same day or just in a few days. And this is something which is extremely motivating for all of us as a team. And of course it's not easy running a startup. Do you ask me if I wish to have five extra hours in my days so I can see my kids and do my nails and do whatever it is <laughs> girls like to do? 
I, I would love it. I would love to. But hey, I'm just living the, the dream, to be honest. It's not always easy, but it's still a dream. Well, I do hope you go back to your school and teach entrepreneurship <laughs> because you're very convincing. <laughs> Next question. I, I, I'm curious. Wait, so you st ah, okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ah, I'm sorry, but no. very unlikely. Okay. Um, thank you for your sorry. I'm, I'm really in kind of your position two years, uh, two years ago, <laughs> and I'm hoping to be there two years <laughs> ago. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, my question is about the white colors now, because you have already built a platform that is working. You know, I, I see that the industry is very different, and I completely understand your focus. You know, but uh, are you considering using for the white colors, or even change the name, or even already that the platform is there? So that's my question. <coughs> well, I think white color it's. It's big space as well. Um, today, I, I'm sure that some hiring solutions in white color could clearly benefit from removing friction and from like creating that immediacy effect which we create in job today. Having said that, um, I believe we we are really starting a huge journey. And we are addressing, we are going after enormous and a very interesting market, which is blue collar jobs. Market which today is simply forgotten and left out and not served by existing solutions. So our commitment will definitely stay for now in blue color. How the company will grow in the future, in a few years of now, what we are going to become, what we said to become is a social hiring platform. Today, it still remains for casual jobs. Once we became global and once we truly became number one, and once we helped millions of people find casual jobs which we need, we might consider expanding in different areas. But today, we are really, really focused on building that brand, which stands for immediacy and uh, easiness of hiring and really clear commitment to the casual jobs. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I would like to know if you could share your experience between um, the time when you and Igene were only uh, splitting your work between two and how you, uh, both of your jobs evolved uh, in which responsibilities you take now and what's the change between the, the, the beginning and all uh, your jobs that, uh, how it looks now. Mm -hmm. Has there been a big difference? How has it evolved with the, all the onboarding of maybe specialists? What would you consider, is there a big difference between what you were doing at the beginning as two and what you're doing now? What positions and what responsibilities you have now? Yes, and having to manage a team, which is now what, uh, what did you say? 50 people? Um, I think in total, globally, we are about um, close to 60 people ah. and uh, in different countries. So that's a challenge. That's a clear challenge for, for us. It's, it's not easy to work in a distributed team. You'd, you would really rather have all of your colleagues in one place. Um, but well, when you are building a global company, uh, working in a distributed team, it's just something you have to do. So you just deal with it. Uh, now from how it evolved um, since very beginning, well, we started with, um, <coughs> even in the very early days, right after it was me and Eugene, uh, we brought on board our first engineers. So front end and back, back end engineer to actually go and build that dream which we had. Um, so from Going from 4 to 55, uh, what changes? Changes is clearly that <coughs> you just, what you do, you just do it faster and better. And you get the talent on a team who knows how to do things you cannot even dream of. And I believe it's definitely a success, key factor of su success of each company is the talent which you have on your team. Because those people, the right talent which you bring, they can 
help you go much faster and just bring things to entirely different level. And uh, when they have a privilege of working with many extremely talented and extremely intelligent people at a job today. Um, in some cases, there is also a challenge in uh, communication, but it doesn't have to be so much with a number of people. It's probably more the fact of distribution. Uh, some things which initially it's extremely clear in my head or in Eugene's head, sometimes it's so obvious to us that we sort of forget to explain to other people. But clearly it has to be this way, but well, it's a communication challenge which you, you do have to work on and it becomes a bit more difficult when people are not in the same space. Yes, maybe we just spoke about talents, just one question. From where do you scout most of your talent here now in Luxembourg? Where are they coming from? Because that's a question which we often have in Luxembourg, where do we get the talents from? Well, we scout them from everywhere. Once again, we are not today, job today, we have three offices. We have uh, headquarters in Luxembourg, uh, we have an office in London and we have office in Barcelona, awesome. where it all started. Um, we are scouting people from every market, once again, because if you set out those really ambitious goals, which believe me, we understand how ambitious our goals are, and if you only have a very limited uh, time to get to those goals and to make them come true, you just need the best talent out there. And those people, chances are they're not going to be living in my street or just around the corner, so you just you try to find them anywhere, but no, no matter the market. Lots of technical talent from our and our teams uh, came from Russia, St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. uh, funny enough, both Eugene and myself, um, we met in Luxembourg for a social circle, but both of us happened to be Russian from St. Petersburg by coincidence of, of the fate. Um, so it was somehow, kind of somehow easy and natural for us to hi hire some technical mm -hmm. talent in Russia. Today we relocated all of the tech team to Lux, and uh, it was challenging, but now everybody is here. So we have 15, have 15 engineers in Luxembourg, and um, one of the CTO who just joined us recently, uh, he, uh, he came from London, and uh, he came with a experience in working in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So I believe we are, we are looking for right talent everywhere. Sorry, I... Hi, Pauline. Thank you very much for your um, story. It's, it's really inspiring. Given that it's the month of May and it's about female entrepreneurs, I hate to ask this question, and I'm sure I wouldn't have to if you were male, but has being female helped or hindered you on your journey? I, I guess I'm not easily hindered. Or does it matter? <laughs> is, is gender irrelevant? Because we keep talking, we keep reading about we need more female entrepreneurs. Is it actually an issue? And does it, as you know, as a female, do you think about this? Is it a concern of yours, or should we just forget the gender issue and just get on with the job? I think that's what what I have done. I don't really, I never really perceived it as something which should be hindering me in any kind of way. And if whatever it is you think it's your shortcoming, just think how you can turn it to your advantage. That's what I would think about it. I don't think it really matters today. Once again, finding the right tal talent, and that's our challenge today as a fast growing company, as a company which really set very ambitious goals for ourselves. Um, finding this talent, it's, it's a big challenge. Whether that talent would come in a, in a form or shape of male or female, I think it's entirely irrelevant for, for, for us as a team. So I would say, I would honestly think gender doesn't matter and it definitely should not matter. Excellent. Thank you. One thing which maybe to add to that, um, in one way it might be a little bit harder, um, it's not about male or female, it's just about being other things in life than just entrepreneur. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I have important people, I have family, I have important people in my life to, to which I believe and I realize sometimes I don't, I don't get to spend enough time with them. So that's a challenge, but I think it's 
practically the same for male or female. Last one. No. Then just one question from my side. I mean, you traced back a little bit the path you did. And what was the biggest challenge so far on your way from when you started to today? What would you say, okay, that was really hard to get over, or to tackle that one? Or was it really, as you said, okay, it's the excitement of doing something that you do only see it with hindsight that it was quite difficult? Um, it was a challenge, but it was also the most valuable lesson I learned in the last two years. And uh, Eugene, my co-founder, has <coughs> great, played a great role in, in teaching me that and in learning together with me. It's all about um, prioritizing. It's all about defining where your main focus should be. And sometimes it's extremely hard. And it's hard because there are so many exciting things you want to be doing and they all seem equally important and they all can make a great contribution to your business but you really cannot afford to do 15 you can only do one and you have to do it well and it might sound like a like in not such a big thing or an like easy thing to do but trust me it, it is extremely difficult mm -hmm. so getting to the essence of whatever it is you are doing thinking okay i'm doing that and i'm doing it for that reason and this is for that particular reason why this is more important than anything else. So getting to the essence of things, I think this is probably the most difficult and the most rewarding thing in, in business and in life. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Paulina. Thank you, Karin. And if you'd like, I would like to give a hand of applause to both of them. Thank you. Okay. Steve, if you, if you don't mind, um, to all the female entrepreneurs in this room, um, because girls, I actually came here to talk to you, <laughs> and that was the whole point of, of me being here. If there is just one thing I, I want to share, is don't ever be scared, and don't ever let fear stand in your way if you really want to go for something. In many ways, limitations is something we impose on ourselves and they only exist in our heads. So if I can really say something is the difference between impossible and possible lies in the level of determination, which you might have for, for some idea or project. So just don't let anything stand in your way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.